come to women in manufacturing Galatina and good to see beautiful faces, beautiful people, women in manufacturing. As the CEO has said, we are partnering with the with Kenya Association of Manufacturers as IDH. IDH is an international NGO uh, promoting sustainability in global supply chains and that's what we're trying to, to work on together with Kamatma. And uh, as you well know, uh, gender empowerment is one of the one of the key key issues in social sustainability. And as IDH, we recognize that it's critical, and that women play a critical role in in driving um, sustainable trade and economic development in in uh, in all countries and all sectors. And we believe that providing women with the necessary tools and and uh, resources, they can be what are what are the, the driver of change, growth and development in in, in their community. Uh, and that's why we are committed to support CAM on this sustainability uh, journey uh, through through the program we we call uh, competitive sustainability for competitiveness. Women are often working in in industry and they are facing significant barriers to career advancement, few opportunities for promotion and, and uh, into supervisory and management positions, uh, etc. Uh, and that's what we are trying to help through CAM and through generations to, to address. There's also a lot around mobile technology. We are all quite mobile enabled in Kenya. Um, but have we used it enough for productivity? We use it a lot for payments in our daily lives. I, I don't know how I would survive without Ampesa, for example. But how can we use it for productivity improvement? Can we use it for timekeeping? Can we use it for, for wage payments? Can we use it use it in other ways to, to increase increase productivity? And there I think we still have we still have some some uh, uh, more innovation to, to, to be doing. Uh, and another example is, uh, which is a bit out there for me, is the use of virtual reality. Can you use virtual reality to train your staff to operate machines better, to see um, security concerns in the environment that they are, they are working with? Um, and how can that help them experience it in real life and then maybe take, it, take, take a little bit more seriously what, what, is actually, what it is actually about? Uh, these are some few uh, uh, high-level examples of where we see digital technology can, can really help us further industry and also further gender uh, equality in, in, uh, in the manufacturing sector and to, to promote the sustainable development and the empowerment of women as well. Through this, through this inclusive and equitable industry, it will benefit everyone, uh, even if we are initially doing it for women. Uh, it will also benefit men if, it, if, if it's more efficient and, and more secure. So as, as we continue to, to navigate the, the rapidly changing world, every day there is something new, new that, that uh, uh, is launched. The call to action towards gender equality uh, is crucial, and it's crucial that we also embrace the digital technology. We are extending the the, women, the International Women Month. Um, so we will do two months this, this year uh, where we are going to work uh, with also with WIM. Um, so we are launching an uh, annual gender in manufacturing event in, on April 18, uh, where we are going to continue this discussion and uh, also develop a, a more formal, formal uh, call to action because today we are here to celebrate so stay tuned for more information on, on that event. Allow me to thank our chair for giving us the opportunity and the room to thrive at KEM. People say that manufacturing is not a space for women, but we have a room full of women in manufacturing. And I remember I was speaking somewhere else and I said, and I asked Google to explain or to really tell me what is manufacturing. And it was a very simple thing. The process of making a product with the intention 
to sell it to the market. I asked myself, if I started cooking and selling food, am I manufacturing? If I'm making soap at my backyard, am I manufacturing? The difference is in scaling. Because I have seen every time my husband and I are watching documentaries, and I have seen documentaries of commercial food cooking. The crepes that we're eating and we say they have come from China, Europe, and all that. Is that manufacturing or not manufacturing? You have walked into the supermarkets and you have seen the daily packed. Is that manufacturing or not manufacturing? So, where do we have more women operating if not manufacturing? <laughs> I think it is us who have refused to embrace that we are the force that is driving the manufacturing. The only thing that a woman needs is to be empowered, give her the skills, and more importantly, tell her that she can do it. And you'll be surprised how well she can be able to do it. At Women in Manufacturing Program, this is what we do for one another. We encourage each other. The small businesses, the big businesses, we come at a playing level where I can sit with Lina for call, where I'm learning my small manufacturing entities, and she tells me the big things that happen with call, which gives me hope and make me see that I can be able to do it. We sit with the SMEs, the micros, those in the cottage industries, and when we are in the room together, we give them hope that we can get there. We demystify that conversation of manufacturing. We have different other things that we do at the Women in Manufacturing. We do market linkages. We are all talking about free Africa continental trade. To the very small one who are in the cottage industry, they think that this is not a conversation for them to listen to. If you are doing a small business, when you hear free Africa continental trade, we give those opportunity of us to understand what is this common market that we're talking about Africa? How can I get there? I tell the women who you, I sit with, it is not our responsibility to think about the infrastructure. That is the work of the governments. Our responsibility is to think about our products, the ones that we are making. Do they comply with what the market requires? I think those are some of the things that we try to train women in the market so that you understand what you are in control of and take care of what you are in control of. Understand what the governments are doing so that you can take advantage of that. KEM help us with advocacy, with policies that are able to open those markets or those opportunities that we work with. We have a whole come see where we do training capacity building to help you as an entrepreneur to understand how to run and grow your businesses. Those are the things that we do at the Women in Manufacturing program. Our focus this year, you have heard that we have new partnerships. A partner who is coming to give us resources, their knowledge, their network, their exposure. The only thing that we need is commitment for the women to come. There's a lot of show, I'll call them free bees in town that occupy our time. But I tell the women that when you hear there's something that is for free, ask yourself, when you invest your time in it, are you committed enough to take the opportunity of what you take from there? Otherwise, you cannot be getting into a class because KEM has some free classes. It could be free, but it is costing your time. So when you appear, make sure that you get out with something and actualize something from that class. 
if you have nothing to actualize then it is not needful for you to be in that class we have business and i'll give an example of a training that we did during covid business maturity continuity programs i think we partnered with Ernest and young and we're able to have those conversations and i'm speaking about business continuity because i've been in business and i had never ever thought that there's need for me to start thinking about the risk in my business and how can i grow or how can i position myself for continuity for business we have such programs that we train at KEM through the Women in Manufacturing Program. Finance and investment, ladiness, linkages. I have had many people calling me and they ask me, Mary, how have you scaled? How did you access money? And I will tell you, there is no level of a business that accessing money is easy. Money is there, everybody is talking about we have so much money, but nobody is accessing that money. It is not rocket science to access that money. It is how ready we are. And I sat in one forum and somebody says, sometimes we are looking for the wrong money at the wrong place. If you need working capital, you need to be sure that you're looking for working capital, be able to prove that is working capital and you can be able to pay it. Then look for the partner who is giving money for working capital. I've had a lot of ecosystem banking. We need to start understanding some of this conversation. Those are the things that we talk about. We are not talking about sustainability. And I'm happy from IDH, they have said that this is one of the programs that they want us to, to train the women in manufacturing. There are huge opportunities when you talk about sustainability. But sustainability is talked in very many different languages, circular economy, ESG management. Are we able to put the connection of when you're in a forum and people are talking about environment, social governance? Do you connect that with sustainability? Do we understand how that would unlock opportunities in our businesses? When we are talking about circular economy, sustainable waste management. Are we thinking that these are the things that government now wants to start charging us more money or circular economy? It is important to see the opportunity that they unlock. We are all talking about green financing. The banks are talking about green financing. Have we ever linked the green financing and sustainability? Why is it that the world, the group, why is it important that we embrace sustainability, the circular economy? Is it a feel good thing for the big organization? Can the small SME build their sustainability journey? If today you are looking for money and you go to any bank, the first thing that they do is to come and do something that they call the ESG audit, environment, compliance, they want to understand how are you relating with the environment? How are you relating socially with where you are doing your business? There could be very small things like housekeeping, making sure that you are minimizing the waste that you are using, the raw material that you are putting in. You minimize your waste in your operation. Taking care of the environment by making sure that you are not just dumping and throwing out everything. There are small things that we are doing but we never connect that into the big conversation of the circular economy of sustainability. I think those are some of the things that we talk about and we try to explain and tell you that we are all doing this, but we need to be intentional so that we can be able to unlock most of the other opportunities that we can be able to unlock access.